that we are here with the parents of Trayvon Martin, Sabrina Fulton, and Tracy Martin, along with his brother, Attorney uh, Ben Crump and Attorney Parks, and uh, we have Reverend Jamal Bryan from Empowerment Movement, and others, Dr. Charles Ogletree is joining us, and others that are here for the National Action Network Convention. We are uh, very happy that in the midst of all that is going on, that the parents and attorneys wanted to come to the convention and share with those leaders from around the country that have been fighting and to make it a national and international issue about justice for Trayvon Martin. Uh, they had said very early they wanted to come themselves and see the people that have been in the trenches supporting them and will continue to support them. Let me make a couple of things clear. One, we made a commitment as an organization, and people have made a commitment across organizational lines, that we are going to support this family until justice has been achieved. This. This case is a case to us that represents far too often what happens in our communities, where there is a double standard. We are not seeking to convict anybody. We are seeking to stop them from acquitting someone without a trial. We are not trying to rush to judgment. We are trying to stop the rush to judgment that Mr. Zimmerman apparently made on the night of February 26th. Let us remember, and a lot of the media in many ways distort this, Trayvon Martin committed no crime. He had no weapon. And he had every legal right to be where he was. The rush to judgment was those that moved against him, said he was suspicious, and took his life. So to lecture us about rushing to judgment, we're a victim of a rush to judgment in this case. Let's be real clear on that. Now, the other thing that I want us to be very clear, this family has said from the beginning, and we that came in early have said, and I repeat, we do not condone or support in any way any acts or language of violence. Trayvon Martin's name must not be tarnished by those that are either for or against us with any reckless behavior, even verbally. It is imperative that we make it clear this family has denounced anything other than nonviolent and peaceful protest. We are not in the business of revenge, we're in the business of justice. And anyone that operates in any other spirit um, is not operating in the spirit set by this family. From day one, when I sat with them, and Attorney Crump and Attorney Parks, I've been very moved and impressed by the dignity and integrity that these parents have demonstrated. Not a word of rancor, even in private. So yes, there are many that get emotional, there are many that get involved, but they should not take it upon themselves to disparage the name of Trayvon in the name of their angry anger. Yes, we're all angry, but you can't be more upset than his parents. And if they can operate with dignity, then all of us must operate in dignity. We must make the ju justice system work, otherwise this movement is for nothing. To go outside of the justice system is to achieve nothing. What we want is to make sure the justice system is corrected and works. Anything short of that is short of the goals and the principles that were outlined. So I want us to be real clear. 
It is also, again, at our convention, our quest is on probable cause, the immediate arrest of Mr. Zimmerman. When you heard his lawyers yesterday, or his ex-lawyers, or his ex-legal advisors, say themselves that they don't know where he is, it is unheard of for someone to kill an unarmed innocent man and walk out the police station, and now we are told 43 days later that they can't even reach him, his own lawyers. So there's no officer of the court, no lawyer responsible for him, no one to reach him. This family has their child that has been killed for no reason, no wrong. And we don't know where he is. He should be apprehended immediately. He should have been held that night. Can you imagine if this had been in another community? This is unheard of, and we feel it should be corrected. The Attorney General spoke here this morning about the federal investigation. We are waiting to see what the state prosecutor does. We are again clearly involved in this for an issue of justice. Lastly, I want us to be very clear. This is not anti-anybody. There are whites, blacks, Latinos, Asians that have marched with us, that stand with us. We are not running a hate campaign. This is a love campaign. We love our children. We love Trayvon. We are not even anti-Zimmerman. We're anti those that feel they can break the law and not have to stand before the bar of justice. So this is not about we are after Zimmerman. We're after justice, and we're for Trayvon. This is a love campaign. Don't distort to pursue justice for an unarmed man who died for no reason. is not hate. It's love. Only those that don't want to stand for justice confuse love with hate. We are here because we love justice and we love victims of injustice. And that's what Trayvon Martin is. I give you now the attorney for the family, Attorney Ben Crump. Good morning. I, I come here with uh, Trayvon's parents, uh, Sabrina Fulton, and Tracy Martin, who you're going to hear from, uh, as well as Attorney Parks and Attorney Bryant, uh, Reverend Bryant. And then uh, we will take a few questions. Uh, I, I wanted to first say uh, and echo Reverend Sharpton. We've got a lot of calls from uh, government officials about when the special prosecutor makes her decision that we want to make sure that everything remains uh, peaceful and responsible and that nothing gets out of hand. So I want to say at the very beginning before we say anything, we want all America, we want all the world, Reverend Sharpton, we're asking everybody who really cares about justice for Trayvon Martin to follow the example of Sabrina Fulton and Tracy Martin, his mother and father, and remaining peaceful and having faith in our system and being prayerful that everything is going to work out regardless of the great length of time that it has taken. They are such a good example of keeping your composure. And it's one of those things, nobody, as Reverend Sharpton said, nobody can be hurting more than them. Nobody can be more outraged than them. And if they can continue to carry themselves in a dignified manner, we all should. And that's what we're praying for and we're begging for and we're imploring everybody to do, especially in light of uh, the special prosecutor's announcement that she is going to uh, render her decision very shortly. I uh, 
First, want to thank Reverend Sharpton. We've thanked them in private, but we want to thank them in public. Yes. You know, when you look at the history of this journey, it's been 44 days now and counting. And it is one of those things when this first happened and for whatever reason, the Sanford Police Department saw fit to accept George Zimmerman's version, this, this neighborhood watch captain, this armed vigilante who had a nine millimeter gun who had shot this unarmed teenager and for whatever reason saw fit to question him and let him leave the police station that night and when Tracy Martin and his family members and some attorneys called me from Miami, it was a situation where they told Tracy Martin they were not going to arrest George Zimmerman. Now, one of my other mentors, Professor Charles Ogletree, is on the podium with us. And it, it is said, Reverend Bryant, that when we do get justice for Trayvon, that may be, as lawyers, our finest hour. But I, I disagree with that. I think our finest hour was when Tracy Martin called begging for help. And the fact that the justice system, the law enforcement, saw it perfectly fine to sweep his son's death under the rug and was not going to say a word. And it wasn't very popular at all. And nobody was marching. Nobody was rallying at that time, Reverend Bryant. It was just a father saying, you know, my son didn't have a weapon. He only had a bag of Skittles and iced tea. And they're telling me that they can't understand why George Zimmerman would be the cause of his death. And they told him that the four reasons why they were not going to arrest George Zimmerman, he had a squeaky clean background, that he had a, he was a four-year student in criminal justice, that he had a license to carry a concealed weapon, and number four, that he was the captain of the Neighborhood Watch Program. And for these reasons, they could not see how George Zimmerman could be the cause of this. And Mr. Martin asked, well, did you do a background check on my son? And they said yes, and did you also see he was squeaky clean? said yes. And so what came out of that was we came to conclude they never did a background check on, on George Zimmerman that night, but they did one on Trayvon Martin, even though he was dead on the ground. Also, they did a drug and alcohol analysis on Trayvon Martin, who was dead on the ground, but did not do one on George Zimmerman. And it was these things that perpetuated itself to the point where I, I truly believe our finest hour was the things we did when the cameras weren't there. The fact that we called, we wrote letters, we filed legal documents and said, Tracy Martin, I, 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 I can't guarantee you what's going to happen, but we're going to dare to care about your unknown son to the Sanford Police Department, Trayvon Martin, we're going to dare to care to do something for him and that even though this was a little black boy in Sanford, Florida, when we called to New York, Reverend Al Sharpton answered the phone and said, I will stand with you because even though he was unknown and obviously unimportant to the Sanford Police Department, Every human life is important. And I think that is our finest hour when we come to that determination that everybody matters, no matter what. So th that is just a little of the background. What are we here for today? Uh, we got a lot of requests. 
about things that have happened in the last 24 hours. So we'll attempt to respond to those things. And we thought it better. Uh, thank you, Reverend Sharpton, again for giving us the venue to just have one big press conference and try to answer all the questions versus the, putting the family through interview after interview as they continue to try to grieve and, and just fight for simple justice. Just simple justice. They don't want anything more, anything less than any parent would want if this was their child who was killed on February 26 by an armed loose cannon and he was unarmed. Number one, Special Prosecutor Angela Corey, who was appointed by Governor Rick Scott, um, made a, a decision not to convene the grand jury in Sanford, Florida. And Attorney Parks and Attorney Rand and Attorney uh, Natalie Jackson and I, we pushed that from the beginning. We did not want a grand jury in this proceeding because we were greatly concerned. Uh, lawyers everywhere know when you go to a grand jury, really what you're doing is passing the buck. And the history of this case, the Sanford Police Department should have arrested George Zimmerman on February 26, and they passed the buck. State Attorney Norm Wolfganger should have arrested Joy Zimmerman for killing Trayvon Martin, and they passed the buck. So the big question was, was the special prosecutor that was appointed by Governor Scott going to pass the buck? And we were very uh, elated to see that Angela Corey said she's not passing the buck, that she is going to uh, do a thorough investigation, and she's going to review all the evidence after she's done a full, fair, and impartial investigation and she's going to make the decision uh, whether or not to arrest George Zimmerman if there's probable cause to, uh, to uh, arrest George Zimmerman. And that is significant because grand jury proceedings are closed door private proceedings that you don't know what happens in those proceedings. So the prosecutor can come out and we don't know what kind of case they presented to the grand jury, and they get to wash their hands like Pilate and say, well, it was the community's decision, and they made the decision, but because she chose not to do that, we all get to watch and see the evidence when it goes to court, because we believe in our heart of hearts that from day one, there was enough evidence to arrest George Zimmerman for killing Trayvon Martin. And in the 44 days that has passed since then, we believe the evidence that has come out has all been so, so positive to effectuate probable cause to arrest George Zimmerman. I mean, the evidence over the last 44 days, there's a plethora of evidence to affect an arrest. We're not talking about a conviction. We're not talking about a conviction. He'll have his day in court. He can say self-defense or stand your ground or whatever he wants. All we're asking for is an arrest, and that's all we've asked for, is a simple arrest so we know that the wheels of justice will start to turn and we'll be assured that all the evidence will publicly be presented in a trial. And we all can see, everybody can see the evidence, and it'll be fair. Zimmerman will have his day in court, and Trayvon's family will have their day in court, and when all the evidence is vetted and we can all see it, then don't we all feel a lot better when the outcome is uh, determined by the jury? And that's all we've been asking for. Nothing more or nothing less. And that's so important. So we applaud uh, Ms. Corey's decision to go ahead and accept the responsibility that the leaders, the elected officials are supposed to do. Number two, we have this um, website that we've been asked about a lot by Mr. Zimmerman. And we will certainly have the parents address this issue uh, but because they said it best. And, and I, you know, we, we sometimes uh, learn a lot from our clients, even though we're supposed to have the education and these law degrees and stuff. It was Tracy Martin, Reverend Bryan, and Reverend Sheldon, and Sabrina Fulton who said, where's America? 
he has a right to do whatever he wants to do. If he wants to do a website and solicit money, he has that right. Now, we took exceptions with some of the things he said in the website, but um, I'll let them speak to that. But it, the, the website is one of the things that, as they said, we're not being distracted by that. Our full focus is on getting justice for Trayvon Martin and getting a simple arrest. That's our full focus right now. And nothing else matters but getting an arrest in this matter. It's 44 days and counting. Uh, thirdly, I guess we, we got to deal with the decision of the very bizarre press conference yesterday. And, it, and it's, it's, uh, it was real troubling to us as we watched this press conference. Um, because the one thing that we was most concerned about after we watched the press conference of uh, George Zimmerman's former attorneys is the fact, as Sabrina Fulton said to me and, and Tracy Martin said, Attorney Crump, they don't know where he's at, do they? And that's the troubling thing. The killer of Trayvon Martin is unaccounted for. We are concerned that he's a flight risk. We are very concerned that he would never be brought to justice for killing Trayvon Benjamin Martin. And that is a, a real concern. His lawyers told us that he wasn't in the state of Florida yesterday. Um, we're very concerned about that. We maintain, as we have all along, had he been arrested on February 26, 2012, we wouldn't be having to worry about this today, 44 days later. Um, so, and, and they will address that. And, and I, I guess lastly, we need to address uh, where we started it from. Tracy Martin and Sabrina Fulton, as I, I bring them to the podium, we got to follow their example, everybody. They, we don't condone any kind of violence in any way from none of these extremist groups or anything like that there. We are employing everybody to be peaceful. And you can be resolute in your conviction, but you got to do it in a peaceful manner. They've always tried to walk by faith, Reverend Brian and Reverend Sharpton, Sabrina Fulton, and y'all have read the articles about how she's leaning on her faith. She has faith in our system, but more importantly, she has faith in God. Tracy Martin has faith in our system, but more importantly, he has faith in God. And we're going to leave it up to the lawyer to handle this matter. We don't need anybody taking these matters into their own hands. I, and I mean that. We don't need, that just takes away from Trayvon Martin if you go do something stupid and act ignorant. We don't need any of that. Young people, old people, uh, nobody. Black, white, we, we don't need any, we need to let the system work because we truly believe that America is the great beacon of hope and the great beacon of justice for the world to see. And we want to, now that everybody's watching, to let it play out. Let's don't try to take the law into our own hands because then we'll be no better than George Zimmerman was on February 26, 2012. You, Sabrina Fulton, Trayvon's mother, and then you hear from his father and attorney Parks and Reverend Bryant. I'd like to thank Reverend Sharpton for inviting us here. I'd like to thank you all for coming out because you could have been doing something else, but you felt that it was important to be here, and I'd like to say thank you. For the last 44 days, it has been a nightmare, and this is coming from a mother's perspective. I have been up and down as if I was on a roller coaster, but I know beyond a shadow of a doubt, that justice will be served. 
I can't really say where I would be without the law team that we have, Parks and Crump. Um, also, in Natalie Jackson's absence, we're just grateful for them because they gave us direction when we had none. Uh, we didn't know what our next steps was. They gave us the right advice, and that's how we get to this point. Thank you. Good afternoon. First of all, I'd like to start by saying uh, thanks to Reverend Sharpton, uh, to our law team, Parks and Crump, Ms. Jackson, uh, to all of the supporters who have been supporting us from day one. Um, as a parent that loses a child, it's, it's very tough to maintain your sanity. Um, but I told myself uh, the second day that Trayvon was dead that I find it within, uh, within myself to do right by him, to make sure that his name wouldn't be his death wouldn't be in vain. Uh, I can recall uh, calling Attorney Crump and pleading my case to him. Uh, Attorney Crump told me that, uh, not to worry about it, that they were gonna arrest him. It's 44 days later, George Zimmerman is still uh, walking free. Um, it's 44 days later, uh, my son is in the mausoleum. As a father, it hurts. Um, but I promised myself that I would stand strong for my family. I would stand strong for everyone who's in support of us. And most of all, I would stand strong for Trayvon, just to make sure that his name lives on. Um, a, lot of, a lot of people are really learning to cope with our situation because um, they figure that they, their child could have been Trayvon. It just so happened that um, Reverend Sharpton told me one day that we would be amazed at the people, at the support of the people of New York when we walked outside. Ever since that day, uh, the support that we have been getting has just been a crutch for us to lean on and just to look into the eyes of the people in Union Square and touch hands with them and hug them. Um, from that moment on, I knew that this fight wouldn't be a, a easy fight and that we had to fight for all the Trayvons that were out there uh, that hadn't been heard of. And still today, um, with the events that, that have been occurring, um, even after all this is over, I vowed to Trayvon that I would not stop pushing uh, to try to get laws rectified and try to get some kind of conclusion and understanding within our community um, that we need to we need to be more positive, more assertive, and, and just to teach our kids um, conflict of resolution, how to resolve certain situations without being confrontational. And um, once again, from the bottom of my heart, from our families, we just like to say thank you to all our supporters. We'd like to say thank you to Reverend Al, Reverend uh, Bryant, our law team, and everyone that supported us. Thank you. Thank you very much. My name is Daryl Parks. You know, uh, part of this mission that we've had here for Trayvon is his legacy will be that we as a country have to address racial profiling and stereotypes. Now, I'm very honored to be a part of the legal team that's representing his family, but I also serve as president of the National Bar Association. And so I want to say um, to Reverend Sharpton and the National Action Network, um, his board and his leadership, and all of those here in convention that the National Bar joins in with you, Reb, in this battle for civil rights. And um, the courage that you have shown in coming from New York down to the South to help us is appreciated. And it's important that you know that. Um, and it's important that people know that had you not done what you did, 
we probably wouldn't be here. And so I, I want to applaud you for that courage. You know, it's not hard to walk in a room like this today, but it's kind of hard when you go to a place like poor Ben did when nobody was there, and to file lawsuits when no one cares, and to stand there and to be courageous. So we are glad to be a part of that and to, to, for the National Bar to join in here um, with the National Action Network today. Um, it's important that we, Ben and I, and Natalie and Jasmine, we are confident that the legal system in our state, the state of Florida, will do the right thing. And I can tell you that every meeting that we've had, both with the state officials and the federal officials, that we advocate for the other Trayvons in those meetings. And that they as a Justice Department, they as a state of Florida, understand that we have major profiling issues going on in our state and in our region, and that they ought to be cognizant of it and address it. But Trayvon's death also is allowing America to have a bigger conversation, right? Some have difficulty with that conversation, but it's a conversation that will make America better, and that's what we're confident in, and that will be the legacy of Trayvon, and we hope that everything that comes out of this is positive. I want to reiterate something that was said earlier because it's important. We, in no shape, form, or fashion, advocate any type of violence, disobedience, or anything, right? We have confidence that Mr. Zimmerman should have his day in court, and we stand behind that as lawyers. And that's his parents stand behind that. So that's what we want to happen. No matter what happens today, let the wheels of justice turn. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. It is um, by no accident that we're here on today. About three miles from here earlier this afternoon, rather this morning, President Obama uh, unveiled the uh, Buffett Law, Buffett Tax, that talked about the equity in our taxing process, that there are millionaires who are paying less taxes than their secretaries. The principle that he was rolling out was economic inequity and calling for America in a few days to be just and fair for the 96% of Americans who make less than $250,000. It is our principle, it's our call on this afternoon to call not for economic parity, but for parity and justice. For us to be at this place now some 40 plus days, and there still is not any arrest or any warrant, is a grave injustice. About 30 days ago, Reverend Sharpton and I were in Alabama marching to commemorate Dr. King's march from Selma to Montgomery. And the reporter asked a pointed question. Why are you all still marching? All of these years later, have you not arrived? Is the struggle not over? And while it is that we were coming across the Edmund Pettus Bridge is when we got alerted about Trayvon Martin and we realized that the struggle still continues. Last year, ladies and gentlemen, Time Magazine made a critical point they said that the person of the year was the protesters. And we thanked all of the attorneys and the family and Reverend Sharpton and National Action Network, but we owe a tremendous debt of gratitude to the thousands of people around the country who have stood with us, from New York to Orlando, pastors who wore hoodies, preachers, and churches who began to pray all over this country, even from London and even the Caribbean, who stood with us in a unified front. Dr. King said an eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth will leave a community blind and toothless. It is our aim, it is our intention that we will not execute on any level, any level of violence. We owe, ladies and gentlemen, a tremendous commendation to the thousands of young people and college students who have converged on college campuses in a peaceable manner to lift their voice and to even to share uh, their distaste with what it is that's taking place. Let me give my regrets to the press uh, because I need you to know that your tagline is going to be different, that the only campaign that's going to be suspended this week is Rick Santorum's. But the campaign for justice will continue until George Zimmerman is apprehended. It is our intention to maintain our march and to maintain our voice and to maintain our resolve. And let it be said to all of the opponents of this campaign that the greatest form and the greatest sign of patriotism has been in fact exuded and exemplified by the parents of Trayvon Martin, who still have confidence in the justice system, still have confidence in the Constitution, and still have confidence that Florida's gonna step up to the plate. Let me say to those of you who are in fact assembled around the world, 
uh, that we are in fact resolved to believe that this family is due closure. And not only are they due closure, they are due justice. Whoever it is that they are, whether they are the attorneys or the advisors of George Zimmerman yesterday, because it is that they never met him, have never seen him, and have not in fact been able to give a due diligence of him, let me say to those attorneys that we are in fact the family and the friends of the supporters every day that there is not an arrest, we are suffering from post-traumatic stress. Uh, th this is a level of tremendous anxiety for all of us. Every day that our children walk outside of their own house and we don't know as parents whether or not they will return, that is stressful. Based off of what it is that they have on, not what it is that they are doing, that is stressful. To know that this young man was not in a nightclub, was not in an alley, was not with the wrong company, was by himself to his father's house, who was active in his life when so many times the press has reported about black fathers not stepping up. He was a father who stepped up to the plate and was accountable and responsible in his son's life. And so we ask, we plead uh, with the state of Florida and with the attorney that she will, in fact, uh, please hasten to arrest of George Zimmerman. It is right, it is constitutional that we have a speedy trial. I don't know how fast is speedy in your interpretation, but 40 plus days is fast enough for us to slow down and get an arrest. And if, in fact, you do not know where he is. George Zimmerman, if you are watching, because your attorneys say you're watching TV every day, please, if you will, since you've got some free time, confess your sins, and God will be faithful and just to cleanse you from all unrighteousness. Thank you. <laughs> We're going to hear, uh, lastly, from the chairman of the Board of National Action Network, Reverend Dr. W. Franklin Richardson. Then we will open the floor to some questions, and uh, we would expect the media will be respectful, since you had a respectful convention, and would be uh, would act accordingly. I want to join Reverend Sharpton in welcoming the parents of Trayvon Martin to the National Action convention. As you know, Reverend Sharpton has, across these many decades, been engaged as a voice for justice, as, a, as an act of empowering men and women when the rules have gone against him. And Reverend Sharpton has borne in his very body and spirit the pain the rejection, the scandalous charges for standing up for others. It is not a new day phenomenon for him. It is his way of life. He's lived it as a testament to his faith and as a testament to his belief in a God who is always present, though sometimes encumbered by cruel and cold human acts. And so today, we, the National Action Network, join with our leader in welcoming this family to their home. The National Action Network is your home. And we're glad to have you here. It is your home because it is the home for all people, whether black or white, who are mis- treated by the justice system in this country. It is home because it is where we stand up for people who cannot stand for themselves and speak for those who have no voice. It is home for you because we value you and your son, not just in this crisis, but before we ever met him or ever heard of him, we knew that we were fighting for young men like him. And so today, we are encouraged because America has heeded to the call and the cameras and the light are upon this situation. And what we will hope to see is the demonstration to the world about how America operates when it is its best self. Unfortunately, across the years, 
America and the American judicial system has often been on center stage because we have acted inconsistent with the creeds and constitutions of this land. But today we have another chance to show the world that we have the process and the vehicles by which we can deliver justice even when there are people who are obstructionists, who get in the way either intentionally or unintentionally to blocking progress and blocking justice. We have no doubt in our mind that Zimmerman will be brought to justice. And the reason we have no doubt is because we will not rest until it is accomplished. Awesome. Awesome, Mr. Chair. We will take questions from the media. And let me say only the media. So identify yourself and your media affiliation, and uh, we will entertain your questions, sir. Who are you? Um, I'm not concerned that they won't be able to prosecute them. Uh, that's the government. They'll find them if they want them. We're dealing with a, a different entity. Uh, I was, we were dealing with the Sanford Police Department. Uh, now we're dealing with a special prosecutor, someone uh, the governor assigned to the, to the case. So I feel confident in, in Ms. Corey. Sir, your name and affiliation? We have no, we cannot confirm those reports. When we hear it, then we'll respond. We will be in the building. We will have another briefing around 5.15, 5.30. If those reports uh, are uh, at that point confirmed, then the parents and all of us will respond at that time. We, we, uh, we haven't been reading our emails while we've been talking. We're polite. Mm. <laughs> No, we do not fear violence, but we keep hearing people saying that there's hate mongering and people asking about uh, other things. Let me be real clear. We've had marches, demonstrations, hoodie marches, church services, rallies. The only violence that has happened was the night George Zimmerman killed Trayvon Martin. And we want to keep it that way. It concerned us. It concerned us because his own attorneys didn't know where he was. Um, but like we said before, we do have faith in the justice system that they will find him when it's time or when they uh, are ready to arrest him. Yeah, um, like Ms. Fortin said, we're um, we're we're we're, we're uh, hopeful that when it's time to make an arrest, that they'll be able to make an arrest. Well, when it we'll cross when, when we get to it, we'll cross that bridge. Lisa Sylvester with CNN. There are reports out right now that uh, the special prosecutor does intend to bring charges against uh, Mr. Zimmerman. We don't want to re re comment on that till we've confirmed that. We have no knowledge of that. We'll take two more. It's been a nightmare for 44 days. Um, 
through God's grace, I am standing here before you and able to speak. Um, because if it was up to me, I'd be in my room crying right now. But it's God that's holding me up and keeping me. That that would be prelim. That would answer the question. We're not answering. Uh, Ms. Bolton, um, Mr. Martin, what do you hope at some point to be able to say to Trayvon about Sorry. the American sure. justice system? What we, do you speak to him, and, and what do you hope at some point to be able to say? Um, I just hope to say that I, I I'm hoping that I can get on my bending knees uh, and speak to him through Christ and let him know that justice will serve. Job well done, my son. We're going to end on that. We'll be back around 5, it's 5.15 after we've confirmed report. Thank you.